Shalom, my friends. Wonderful to be with you again this week. And today we have a very special uh, guest, which is Joseph Gittler. And uh, he's going to speak to us about Leket Israel, which is a beautiful and growing, uh, it's not an organization, I would say. Charity. In Hebrew, Charity. we call it an amuta, yes. which is the Hebrew word for NGO. Yes. Non-governmental organization. It's true because it's like it's a charity. It is a it's, charity. Yeah. So Amuta in Hebrew because we are learning some Hebrew now with our friends, and uh, we are going to speak about what they are doing, their mission, the vision, and all of that. So you made Joseph. You made Aliyah in 2000. This is just wonderful. So it's like 17 years already. S September 5th will be 17 years. 17 years. Hard to believe. Yeah. I have a my oldest daughter just joined. Uh, the Israeli army. So uh, that's, it. that's, that's yeah. a big turning of a corner. Sure, for sure. Us here. And you have five children, don't you? I have five children from mm -hmm. the ages of seven to my oldest who's 19. Wonderful. And in 2003, you saw the wastage of food in the country and you say, well, maybe I can start to do something. And you just started by yourself. Yeah, I was really concerned. It was a time of increasing poverty in Israel during the Intifada and lack of tourism, a lot of people lost their jobs. And even those who were working, wages were pretty stagnant. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, I go to all these beautiful events, and at the end of the events, there's so much food left over. What are they doing with this food? And we all know the answer to that question. They're not doing anything. They're feeding the staff. Maybe the families are taking a little bit home. But overall, not much happening. And that was in Yiddish, I call it a shanda. That's not a Hebrew word, it's a Yiddish word. It just means horrific, mm -hmm. unacceptable. Mm -hmm. And I decided I need to try to do something about it, and leket was the response. Mm -hmm. So what is the name, leket? What does it mean? So leket is one of the biblical terms mm -hmm. which were directed at the farmers in ancient times because we didn't have mass production of food in those days. In fact, we didn't really have excess either. And because we didn't have excess or mass production, farmers were commanded by God that they had to leave a corner of their field, if you remember that, mm -hmm. for the poor, or some stuff that fell off the wagon while they were harvesting, mm -hmm. they couldn't collect it. And so we've modernized that. We can't command in the modern state of Israel sure. anyone to do anything. <laughs> I don't know if we can do that in, where you come from in France either, but yeah. certainly, certainly in Israel, you try to tell someone to do something that's not going anywhere. Propose. You propose. We propose, mm -hmm. we suggest. Mm -hmm. And what we learned over the years is that all the producers in Israel, whether they're manufacturers, whether they're farmers, whether they're caterers, no one likes to see their hard work go to waste. So if they can't make a profit off of it, and that's really the key, if they can make a profit off of it, be my guest. But if they can't, if prices are low, if for health and safety reasons, if for contractual reasons, they can't sell these goods, why let it go to waste? That's just a shanda, mm -hmm. unacceptable. Shanda. Yeah, that's a good I'm word. I'm learning, yes. <laughs> it's just unacceptable. That's not here in Israel only. Mm -hmm. That's unacceptable shanda. anywhere in the waste. Do you still use it in Israel, the name It's shanda? used by people who know a little Yiddish. Uh -huh. It's just unacceptable in our day and age, especially in a successful Western country. I mean, how can we be in a place where we read about these tremendous successes in high tech mm -hmm. and security and then read in the next sentence, there's someone who's hungry. Now this is going on in the United States, in Canada, in England, in France, all the Western powerful countries. Doesn't mean we should accept it. We need to fight it. This is wonderful. You know, uh, I, when we arrived here, I had a sense that Israel, because it's, it's a small country, but when somebody comes, he can change the country. And I saw that you, you had the price of Nefesh Ben Nefesh, which is, which is called a Bonet Zion. Yes. And you had this price that you were the fifth, 15th um, most, uh, wait, 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 most influential Jew in the world, which is like amazing. That was, that was uh, a little exaggerated, was but, it? but very good for Leket. Okay, <laughs> yeah. all these prizes, mm -hmm. you know, I don't need them for my own self-esteem, sure. but they give publicity to Leket, they bring in supporters, 
they bring in new volunteers. And I actually make an interesting point. Israel is a country of immigrants. Mm -hmm. okay? It has been since its founding. Mm -hmm. And immigrants have played an outward role. And it was wonderful for me to be recognized as an influential American immigrant to Israel because it's very important for me that people know. I mean, we were talking, before the interview, we were talking about Hebrew and accents. When I speak Hebrew, I'm pretty fluent at this point, but the American accent is there and it's going to stay. Yeah, because, because you arrive a bit, you arrive after... I, you, I, I you, want it to stay. I oh, want nice. people to know mm -hmm. that I came here from somewhere. I came here on my own accord. No one forced me to come. Why, why does anyone need to leave America, right? It's such a wonderful place. I was lucky. I could have been born, you know, behind the Iron Curtain. I got lucky. My grandparents went right instead of left. Right, you ended up in one place. Left, you ended up in America. And so I want people to know that I came here and that look what I've done and what we've done and that you can come here and it's a tough place, you know? It's not a friend, not a lot of friendly neighbors, uh, other countries around here. But you can come here and make a great life for yourself and make a difference if that's what you're looking to do. I know this. I saw that in, in Israel, and it's beautiful to think that you are in individuals who can do something into your country and making it better. I think there is a potential, there is like an energy in this country. Yeah. Uh, because I come from France and I come from England, and I'm like, over there will be almost nothing. And, but here, even like personally, I know I can do something to make it better. And it's like, this is something I know is difficult. Israel is not always easy. We know that too. Sure. But it's like, but there is this energy here, which is wonderful. Anyway. Well, I'll just, may, if I may, I'll just add yeah. for a moment that that's certainly been one of the most powerful parts of my existence here has been seeing the volunteer spirit joining us. Really from, I can't say from day one, because day one, I just said, I'm going to do it myself. But day 25, when I publicized, I'm looking for volunteers to help me collect excess food for the poor. The outpouring of volunteerism was tremendous. And that's why as an organization, we have 50 to 60,000 volunteers every year. Not all from Israel. There's a strong spirit of volunteerism from diaspora Jewry and from the evangelical Christian community who come in droves. But it's a worldwide volunteer wanting to help the state of Israel. That's what it is. This is wonderful. So let us, yeah, because I saw on my Facebook when I put something about Leket, somebody say, I've been gleaning with them. And I was like, whoa, this is, this is cool. Yeah, so it's, um, we started to hear that there were a lot of crops, fruits, vegetables being left in the fields like this. And we, at that time, we were primarily collecting a leftover food from caterers and army bases and corporate cafeterias, and we said, we have to do something about it. And it was the beginning of social media. Mm -hmm. We just started to post by email, by Facebook. I'm not sure anything else existed in that time. And the response to help us feed the poor by coming out to the fields, by picking for the needy, by having fun, mm -hmm. get a tan, mm -hmm. whatever the selling point was that we needed, and people just started coming out. You know, I grew up in northeastern United States. And in the fall, we used to go apple picking, and in the summer, strawberry picking. You paid to do that. And so interestingly, a lot of the tourists who came, they would say to us, do we have to pay to volunteer? And we'd say to them, this is volunteering. You don't really need to pay. Donations accepted. We have a budget that we need to fulfill in order to pay our staff. We have tremendous amounts of volunteers, day in, day out, gleaning in the fields, picking up food in their own cars from catering halls, working in our warehouse, working in our office. It's, it's, we're actually a much larger organization than our budget would say because we get so many things for free that a corporation would never get. This is wonderful. I saw, and we're going to show you a little... Um, a clip and you can see the people harvesting and the field is suddenly empty with the people. So watch that. Yeah. 
Each week, Leket Israel rescues hundreds of tons of excess agricultural produce as well as dairy and dry goods that are close to their expiration dates. For all this to happen, Leket Israel needs thousands of helping hands from all over Israel and abroad. More than 55,000 volunteers each year, among them 25,000 youth, partake in Leket Israel's mission to feed Israel's needy. Each one giving off their time to fulfill this purpose. Wonderful to see all these volunteers helping. Now, your Leket Israel does really something very specific about food waste. I would be happy that you speak a bit about that and the numbers and how it's improving and maybe also the goal that you have again to improve, like I know, sure. that, yeah? So I think one of the things that excites me is that food waste as a, as a topic, if you stick it in Google, it's exploding. It's being talked about in the entire world. People are finally starting to understand it's a very valuable resource. How can we let all this food go to waste? So here in Israel, we certainly are leaders. We are the Israeli member of the Global Food Bank Network, which is an association of food banks in developing countries. So we help other countries open up food banks and do this kind of activity. But just here in small Israel, the amount of waste is mind-boggling. Our last two food waste reports talked about a minimum of 64 million meals wasted. And this year, we will probably rescue about 3 million. So that's not even 5%, exactly. And our agricultural waste report talked about 700,000 tons. And we'll do 20, 25,000 this year. Now, these are both exceptionally large number. I believe our greening initiative may be the largest in the world of any one organization. And yet, we're not even at 5% of what's available. So we are very aggressively trying to grow our organization. I know, I tell you, I knew about Leket like about eight years ago. And I can see like the growing and like, your website is amazing. Your videos are great. I like the clarity. I like, so you are very open about how you do the things and like, also, because it's, it's wasted food, he needs to be still very good food and nutritious food. I mean, you, you are doing like an amazing work and it's, it's very exciting to see. And you are teaching people, which is, I think, very important. Thank too. you. Well, we, we, we treat it like a business, mm -hmm. okay? Happens to be that if at the end of the year, not that this has ever happened, that we have money left over, there's no dividends, okay? It goes back for next year but we run it like a business. We hire great people who care and are serious, who want to work in the charitable sector. We try to make our influence felt, not just in Israel, but overseas. We have food banks from around the world, Nepal, Argentina, Greece, and others who visited over the years. Uh, we do things here in Israel that others don't do. Certainly the work we do uh, with the collecting excess cooked meals from the army and from corporate cafeterias, from hotels, is not done as widely as we do here. But that's probably the most valuable work that we do because when I can go to a small after-school club for kids or a homeless shelter or a battered women's shelter and tell them, guess what? All your food expenses are now zero or close to zero. That's a very, very powerful statement. They can fundraise less. They can feed more people. They can feed the same amount of people better. That's their choice. But one of the impacts we have is an organization will call and say, well, the extra money we have now because you're providing the food, we bought each kid a laptop. We got extra tutoring sessions. We were able to help a woman make her rent payment. Whatever those impacts are, and that's how we sleep at night because we know that our impact isn't just feeding people, it goes a step further than that. Oh, this is wonderful. I heard also even today there was an article in a Jewish press, I think, about Nevet, which is like for the kids. Could you explain also a bit? Because it's just amazing to see the, yes. the importance of that and yeah. the impact, the social impact that you have. Yes, yeah, so Nevet is, is a project that was founded by Leket and was part of Leket for many years. 
Now it's an independent organization, actually. We, we think it will grow larger without us, actually. I'm involved, and our CEO is still involved. And that is a project which tries to fill in gaps in schools that don't have a hot lunch from the government. And so we are feeding about 8,000 sandwiches every day during the school year to youth at risk. They could be poor. They, they could be not poor, but their families are going through difficult times, divorce, alcohol abuse, drug abuse, whatever it is. And so we step in, and a sandwich, and maybe a fruit or a vegetable, and that goes a long way. Because if every day in school you don't have something to eat, it's hard to concentrate. And the reaction uh, from the staff and the school principals to that project has been super. Unfortunately, like all our projects, it has a waiting list. And we're always looking for resources to grow all our projects. You know, the same goes for our day-to-day -day work in Leket. We have dozens of army bases, corporate cafeterias, and hotels waiting for us. Because we don't have all the resources. I mean, who does? But we don't have all the resources we need. We're trying to put additional trucks on the road, hire more drivers, buy more gas. Because sure. for us, it's a very simple equation. When we can raise enough money to put a new vehicle on the road, from day one, we're feeding thousands and thousands of needy Israelis. So I'm continually pushing as hard as I can to get those opportunities. Sure. So do you have, um, is, is there more, la, the population in Israel, is there more local, poor, sorry, more, uh, poor regions, or is it, do you understand? Is Very it's... good question. So, you know, we talk about the periphery, but I see poverty throughout the country, okay? Um, certainly, there's certain groups in Israel where there's more poverty. We see more poverty in the ultra-Orthodox community. We see more poverty in the Israeli Arab and Bedouin communities, Ethiopian community, but those communities also get more help because it's, the poverty is stronger and louder and we hear more about it. But we can go to the middle of Tel Aviv and we can find secular people in need. We can find modern Orthodox people in need in communities throughout Israel. So it's pretty wide ranging and that's why Leket works. From Eilat in the south to Matula in the north and all parts between, we work with Jews and non-Jews alike. Of course, we're a national organization we work throughout the country, over 200 organizations feeding over 200,000 people every week. And it sounds good, and it's great, but it's not enough. So what is your goal? Because we've said, okay, it's a great, so we've set a goal of 50,000 tons by 2020 of fruits and vegetables and 5 million meals by 2020. And those are big numbers, but even those numbers are still small. So what I hope is that there'll be other charities who get involved in this topic. Even businesses are starting to see, not so much in Israel, but in the States, I've seen dozens of new businesses that have said, there's got to be money to be made in these leftover food. And even if these businesses are successful, there's so much waste. There's so much to do that I think Leket has a long life ahead of it. Sadly, on the one hand, because it means there's poverty, mm -hmm. but happily on the other, because at least we're making use sure. of this tremendous resource. I heard, I heard on your, I, I was looking on your website and I saw that one shekel of when you go to fetch the, the, the food is like 3.1, I think, shekels, 3.2 shekels. So it varies during the project. It can be anywhere from three to seven shekels. Why do I say that? Because our project at night is all run by volunteers, so it's cheaper. During the day, we have our big refrigerated trucks. costs more. The point, though, is that we are a leveraged organization. And what I mean by that is that because we don't buy the food, okay, we spend our money on salaries, leasing and buying trucks, gas, insurance, warehousing, marketing, fundraising, even with all those costs, which this year are about 45 million shekels, about $11 million of cash, like it will spend this year, 
we expect to bring in 40, 50 million dollars worth of food because the value of the food is still far greater. So what we love to say in Leket is a shekel gets you four or five shekels worth of food. Leket has over 100 employees making a living. So your shekel that you donate pays someone a salary, which at the end of the day is the best we can do. We're great for the environment. We're saving... That, that's it. This is one. yeah, right? sure. We're saving food that would have turned into methane gases. We have a very strong volunteer spirit. Oh, yeah, and by the way, we also feed the poor. Like, let's not forget about the fact that tens of thousands of Israelis every day are getting support from Leket, from all sectors of society, all ages, all different types of need. Oh, it's amazing. Uh, now I want maybe to show to the people this cute, because you do some very good uh, li uh, videos, and this is a cute one of a little orange. Look at that. No one picked this orange because it wasn't profitable or it wasn't beautiful enough or it was simply forgotten. So if you're concerned about an orange in the orchard, you'll certainly want to help a child who'll be happy to eat it. One in three Israeli children are in need of not only food, but also vitamins and rich nutrition for proper development. Leket Israel rescues quality food from going to waste, providing for thousands of families in Israel. With your support, we can bring even more fresh, nutritious food to people in need. I think this is a very cute little video. I really, it's, it's like, you want to see more, and I'm sure that you have some new ones coming for Rosh Hashanah. And we do, keep, keep tuned. Yeah, keep tuned. And you, you look like it, www.leket.org. And actually, oh. that's the best place uh, to see these videos, is by visiting our website at leket.org. And on our website, you can get all different types of information on how you can get involved. So if you're visiting Israel, Come yourself with groups, the more the merrier, to glean in the fields. We have opportunities in a number of sites throughout the country. And since the weather's so great here year round, unless there's a deluge, you can really volunteer almost every day of the year outside of Saturdays. And people who live in Israel who are watching this can volunteer at night picking up food. Groups are welcome at our warehouse, repackaging fruits and vegetables for distribution. Um, we take all types of help. Of course, we need financial assistance, which you can also find, and we have tax deductibility in the US, Canada, the UK, France, Switzerland, Australia, Israel, and if you're not from one of those places, we will figure it out if you need it. And we're very, very fortunate really to have supporters throughout the world, and so wherever you are in the world, if you want to reach out to us, the best is to send an email to info at leka.org, we will respond quickly. And for those uh, Christian viewers watching this, I've seen the power of the experience when Christian viewers come and are able to put their hands yeah. into the ground of the Holy Land. There's something extra powerful for them. And so I call upon everyone, come glean in the Holy Land. It's a powerful experience. It's wonderful. Isn't it amazing? You can be involved with Israel. Joseph, thank you again for explaining to the people what is like it. And we will see you next week. Bye. Shalom, dear friends. Wonderful to be with you today. We are looking at the greetings today, so you will know few words in Hebrew how to greet each other. Now we say shalom, you know this one. And there was one more specific when you want to speak to somebody, you say mashlomcha, which is also with the name, the root of shalom. Mashlomcha will be for man, mashlomer will be for a girl, and mashlomchem will be when there is few people together. Okay? So when you respond, you can say beseder, which means everything is good, everything is in order. Okay? Or you can say beseder gamor, which is really everything is 100% in the right place. You have another one which is mamash tov, is really good. You have another one which is a shlomi tov, which means my peace is good, it's all right. And you have a simple one which is kol tov, everything is good. 
And there is another one, if you are a bit sad and not everything is good, is Lo Col Carto. Lo Col Okay. So the greeting in the morning, you will say Bokotov, and the person will answer Bokotov, or they can say Boka Or, because it's like, it's a beautiful light today. And it comes from Genesis 1 when God created the heaven and the earth and the light. So it's like Boka Or. Uh, and in the afternoon, we said so Chaim Tovim, which is plural, so Chaim Tovim. In the evening, you will say Erev Tov. And during the night, you will say Lala Tov. And you can hear little kids saying Lala Tov, Ima, Lala Tov, Abba. Uh, good night, Mama. Good night, Papa. So after you have for the week, at the end of the week, you say Shabbat Shalom. It starts on the Friday evening, it's for Shabbat, and it will end up Saturday evening when the sun goes down. And there you will say Shavuot, which is have a good week. Now you had Shabbat and now you have a good week. Sh uh, Shavuot. Now, right now, we are coming into the end of the year here in Israel because it's like about September, October, and it's called Rosh Hashanah. And we spoke already about that. But if you want to greet somebody and everybody on the street, we say it even like for about two weeks, even before it, it happens on the street, when you do your shopping, people will say Shana Tova. And if you want to say it really sweet, you say Shana Tova Umetuka, which in have a good year and also a sweet one. You remember we've learned about matok, which means sweet. So metuka is the, thing, the, the feminine one. So you say, Shana Tova u metuka. Bye. Thank you, Joseph, again for coming and explaining about Leket Israel. This is wonderful. You can be involved with this uh, organization and you can even be involved in the land with the organization. This is great. And uh, thank you, Joseph. And from Joseph and me, bye, see you next week.